Now, Nigeria has been described as a country with great economic potential yet to be fully harnessed. In 1957, agriculture contributed 65.7% to the country's GDP. But over time, this declined significantly to 41% by 1999 after the petroleum boom in the 1970s. But as at 2019, oil contributes 8% to the country's GDP, which makes for 70% of the government revenue and 90% of foreign exchange earnings. Now the distortion in turn produced adverse effects on the production levels of both food and cash crops in the country. However, the Nigerian government has taken strides to diversify the economy with some interventions such as the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan launched on the 5th of April 2017, investments in critical infrastructure, implementation of the 2019 capital budget, the road infrastructure tax credit scheme, border closures amongst others. All right, uh, here with me in the studio to speak on this is Shegun Shele. He is a chartered accountant and consultant who joins me live in the studio. Thank you very much for joining me in the studio. Thank you for having me. Now we have all of these things. Nigeria used to be heavily dependent on agriculture until we found oil. Yeah. The black gold, quick exactly. money, right? Exactly. But <laughs> how would you say we have done economically? How well have we done economically as a country? Okay, well, thank you. I think uh, basically the mistake was having to put all our eggs in one basket. The advent of the discovery of crude oil mm. made uh, the Nigerian people suddenly develop an appetite for consumption. You know, and um, to be able to, to, to fuel this, fortunately we had a money spinning product. Okay, we'll hold on quickly. Let's take a quick break as you're watching Independence Day special on Plus TV Africa. Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching Independence Day special on Plus TV Africa. Still in the studio with me is Shegun Shele, who is a chartered accountant and a consultant. Shegun, before we went on the break, uh, we we're having a conversation around how well we have done economically as a country here in Nigeria. Okay, well, economically, Nigeria could uh, have done better. Fortunately, we run a modern economy with oil being the sole product that earns us as much as 90% of the foreign exchange that the country depends on. We are a heavily import-dependent nation. And with uh, just a money economy, the uh, status that we find ourselves with, it makes it, it puts a lot of pressure right, on, the, on the foreign exchange uh, rate. Now, if only it, there's a lot of sincerity coming out of government regarding diversification, and rather than play politics with it, castigating other administrations, successive administrations, mm -hmm. prior to your administration, and that has been the style over the years, if you are not laying the blame on the military government, you are laying the blame on the immediate past administration, I think uh, we should be more futuristic you know, in, our, in, our, in our outlook. We seem to be Already as it is, there is a massive decline in infrastructure. There is no way you can grow an economy that has no infrastructure, near to zero infrastructure. When we put in a whole lot more of our effort in growing the infrastructure, the road, power, for example, the level at which we are still talking about less than 5,000 megahertz of power, mm -hmm in today's world market is, un is unthinkable. You know, but then uh, the, the level of corruption we have, which is almost like saying walking in the streets, as it were, has robbed us of all those opportunities that ordinarily we should have been able to cash in on before now. But there seem to be some civil lining from this government. Whether it is not playing politics with it or it's playing rhetorics, but the fact remains that there has been some intentions to better the infrastructure deficit. Mm -hmm. And that we can see from the way the budget itself is skewed. Before now, we've had predominantly the expenditure budget of the federal government skewed towards recurrent expenditure. And then you, you wonder how, yes, how, do, how, do you, how do you grow, how do you develop? 
because this is talking about salaries and wages and overheads. Differently from you providing the necessary infrastructure, rail Amenities, projects, yes. road, power, you know, these are things that can that drive the economy. On people's businesses. More or less. And even, drive, even helping drive the economy. Of course. You know, when we talk about every business around here in this country, we are more or less our own local government. That's you provide your power, business. you provide your water, you even provide your security. Unfortunately, we used to say this some 10, 15 years back, but of late, it has gotten worse. The level of insecurity in this country is almost tilting towards what you have in, in Syria mm -hmm. and Yemen and, and Afghanistan and those kind of places. You know, nobody seems to be safe. And now, with the issue of the oil still having that bulk of effect on our foreign reserves, isn't it quite disturbing? And the fact that we, we need to focus on more labor-intensive sectors that will generate jobs for the people. Unfortunately, you know, this process started many years back. This over-dependence on crude oil started many years back and left every other aspect of prospects of making money, foreign exchange uh -huh. that is, you left it to be totally moribund. Now, for you to be able to make that change, it's not something that will just happen in a flash of a pan. It has to be efforts put up over years consistently, you know, for there to be a meaningful change. Now, this administration, in its own wisdom, felt, okay, the best way to start is to even stop the pull on the, on the foreign exchange. And that is what curtailed the importation. So there was a list at the time, the 44 list, 41, if I, yeah. 41, is it 41 again, mm -hmm. that the CBN actually drew up to make it a restriction for you to assess foreign currencies if you have your item on, those, on that list. Which should be increased. Yes, which naturally helps save some foreign Effort. currencies for, to extend to the, to, the, to the results we are seeing being visible in the, in the foreign reserve. Now, you need to still generate. The problem of the country today has actually been generating enough revenue. The revenue level is so low. So uh, reducing the pool on foreign currencies like they've done, and they seem to consistently even start applying now with the closures of the, of border. the borders, is also having its own effect in, an, in, 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 in a subtle way. But like you rightly said, putting the people, the youth especially, the, the population tells us we have about 65%. Use As youth, yes in the, in the demographics exactly that can be useful for manufacture. Unfortunately, each time when we import, what we are doing is we are exporting our jobs. Of course. So to be able to make that trend a reverse of that trend, it's simple: curtail the level of import. When people talk about the border closure, yes, for a business person who seems to have invested monies, probably that they got from a bank facility, who will be counting his losses. You know, but at the larger sphere, the country is bleeding. And how do I mean? Country, countries, developed countries in the world, the United States, for example, that is perceived to be the world leader in the economic uh, bracket, con controls its, 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 its borders. It controls what comes into this country. But now the difference between what's happening in the United States and what's happening here in Nigeria, you see that while they are protecting their borders, they are making relevant efforts to make sure that those infrastructures necessary to help them produce whatever it is that is coming into their countries are made available for the people. The first problem, corruption. Corruption is the only window through which monies that are meant for infrastructural project, projects are siphoned. It will be pretty difficult for them to, quote and unquote, take out monies that are meant for salaries of staff. Mm. So they will find a way to ensure that that is paid. But when it comes to trying to fix a road somewhere or do a rail project somewhere or put in extra generating plants to ensure that the public power utility comes up and runs well, then someone is either over inflating the invoice or outrightly collects a mobilization fee and into thin hair. The guy disappears with the connivance of government officials. So all the talk that uh, there's a re reversal so, seem to be in place right now, that things seem to be changing, we need to see more, you know? And of course, because we've come from a very disadvantageous position over the years, the little effort may seem not to count for anything because we want to see more, more effort being put in. Now, when you have a 
almost ideal, totally almost ideal workforce, as large as we have with the youth in Nigeria. And yet, we are not getting them into any productive work. How, we are not surprised with the level of insecurity. The rate at which kidnapping has snowballed. Before, it used to be armed robbery. Now, they seem not to even be involved in armed robbery as much. What has taken over has been the quick, easy way, get somebody, keep him somewhere, demand, and then they get even big monies than they used to get in the days when they were places. going, yes, to do, to do their armed robbery activities. You know, so you need to make a change. You need to make a reverse. Mm. And how do you do this? We expect that first things first, the Nigerian economy or the Nigerian society is locked down on the definition of what success is in our part of the world, okay. and that is how much money you have, the material possessions you can, you can display. That shows how successful you are. So somehow we need to make that change in the psyche, in the orientation of the average Nigerian. Thing. That has to be corrected because it is not about monies. It's nothing. But we celebrate and over-celebrate those who have the little of it to throw around. Mm -hmm. Then the much of it, it becomes almost like your lord and master. And everybody now has this crease to ensure or to try in every way possible to amass it anyhow. And nobody asks you where you get it from. What they want to is, mm -hmm. you have arrived. Mm -hmm. And so let me be part of this, your celebration of your success. Now the youth who ordinarily should be involved or being gainfully employed in the manufacturing real sector exactly. of the economy, they are also in the rat race. We mistakenly are also creating something right now in this economy that is laughable. We have an inroad, as it were, in today's market, in today's Nigeria's economy, a whole lot of easy money-making activity activities and ventures. Mm -hmm. When you have all those gaming, bet on this and bet on that, you know, without rubbing or pulling anybody's business down, it has its, its effect on the economy. And that has been the issue. A whole lot of the young, vibrant minds that, that that can be employable is employable into this market will tell you how much are you want to pay me how much are you going to pay me if you try to get them into a job because for them it's like if i can stake this my money on this game <laughs> my return is even more than what, what you want to pay me that i'm to wait for, for 30, 30 days mm -hmm. so there's, there's no encouragement so these are things that ordinarily government should control as a matter of necessity now, do you think that we're, the government is intentionally trying to put in strategies that would make us more competitive on the global front? That's, um, that's neither here nor there. Because first thing first, we are not even sustaining the economy within before we can now start thinking of without. So being globally competitive, obviously, we are not. And that is why goods that are flooding our market we, and we have substitute locally manufactured, of, uh, manufactured goods of, of, of the same type would naturally be sold at lower prices than you have with the manufactured goods. The manufactured uh, goods in Nigeria have inher in inherently high cost of production yeah, because of what they have to go through. So they that. can never be as competitive as the guys who are bringing in products from countries where everything is available to them. But well, that's already putting us at a disadvantage. That is where we are. And unfortunately, or rather fortunately, federal government in his own wisdom, believing and saying that that has been the ugly trend the economy seemed to be uh, the, the nose, nose diving into, decided on the clamp down on the borders. That if I can restrict goods and services going in and out of the country, especially because most of it actually coming, the bulk of the goods that go into the Benonoa port, the final destination is Nigeria for those who have seen the trade at that, at that end of the, of, 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 the, of the border. The, the most of the trucks that pick goods from their port destination is Nigeria. So it's obvious that even the, um, the importers in Nigeria decide or deliberately decide to use the ports there, even rather than use our own ports, which will even bring in more money. As it were, because any vessel that births <laughs> would have fees to pay the MPA, which is a revenue earning agency of government, and which will naturally help shore up the, the revenue base on the non oil export window. But how sustainable do you think this is? Because now, when you take a look at so you know, previous administrations, you see that, oh, somebody started a project, and then because the administration has gone, some of those projects do not you know, get to the completing stage. Is it no time for us to start off, you know, having more national strategies rather than political party strategies? Unfortunately. 
there is a rhetorical statement of government is a continuum here in this part of the world. And it's actually not really, really achieving that purpose. If a government can sit down, honestly, and develop a long-term strategic plan on how to get Nigeria out of this quagmire we found ourselves in the economic doldrum, it would be a lot better for it to be sold to the Nigerian populace, bought by them, and have support from international community that even when a new government is coming in and does something differently, especially if the government, sitting government at the time puts in commensurate, uh, uh, honest effort to see through those strategies mm -hmm. to the extent where it is meaningfully chunking out results, even if it is coming in trickles, but you can see that, okay, and it is well communicated mm -hmm. that, look, we are not going to get there like tomorrow. It's going to take us some time to, uh, it's, it's like a marathon, and it's going to take us some time to get there. And we communicate effectively. And document. There's Naturally. something around documentation. Thank you. And then whoever comes in who is derailing from that plan has a likely chance of being, of losing a seat or losing his position in power at the next election, four years down the, down, down the line. If we can sit down and develop a 30, 40, 50 year plan, and break the 30, 40, 50 year plan into manageable one year events. Thank God this administration, with the help of the National Assembly, is trying now to redirect the budget back to the January, December normal year window. You know, departing from the June, July that we used to get the budget uh, approved and then we start implementation. Mm -hmm. You heard the president today saying uh, he's going to release or he's ordering them to release 600, 600 billion yes. for infrastructure for the next three months of a budget 2019 that ordinarily is expected to end in another three months as it were. But this budget 2019, it would be seen to continue because it just started some couple of months back in July. Mm -hmm. You know, but if they want to try and move in the 2020 budget to commence from January, we expect him within the next few weeks to lay the budget um, uh, in front of the House of Assembly for them to start deliberating on it. So if that can happen and then we can redirect, it can have its own effect. But for them to sit down, not the medium plan, uh, three sure, year, five year, them. no, mm -hmm. because it's about your administration. We have to leave a legacy, so something that they have to use to refer to us. No, I want to be the one. You saw the, what happened in Lagos with the former governor, who, because he wanted to ensure that those projects that he commenced were in his name, hurriedly went ahead and uh, started unveiling them. Uh, <laughs> projects that were far from being completed. No, we should, we should depart from it mm -hmm. because of the way we see success around here for the kind of definition of success that we have created for mm -hmm. ourselves mm -hmm. and the politicking and the over-politicking of the, of the, of the, the, even the democratic process Which that we run. Which has now become a menace. It, it's, 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 uh, it's not good for us. Countries that either to will look at Nigeria and come to Nigeria to learn, to get, uh, they are doing better. You, can, you can't be talking about uh, Rwanda, for example. What are we talking about here? Rwanda has taken over co completely. The Ghanaians that we used to tell to get out that we told some years back to pack yeah, their things and leave the country. Mm -hmm. Ghana today has become the heaven where Nigerians also wants to run to. Most of us put, put our children there. You know? And then you see companies co going there now to set up plants. The companies going there, even motto assembly plants. I heard, I read somewhere back, whether it's true or not, I don't know. I think I read for Honda, I read Nissan, about five major car auto companies, uh, car my assembly companies, are trying to get their plants in Ghana. into Ghana. Why? Stable democracy, wonderful uh, uh, security, guaranteed, infrastructure, road, power. Yes, I mean, some couple of years back, business. Ghana celebrated 24 hours seven days a week, 365 days a year of non-stop power oh, supply. supply. We, so we find that pretty difficult to achieve here. And now it's not as if we do not have, it's not like the, you know, the capital necessary is not there because global wealth reports mm. shows that we actually, the global wealth report now stands at 317 trillion, trillion, dollars. trillion dollars. That's a whole lot. And then we see the investments coming into Nigeria from January to May of um, 
14. from January 2. to yeah, it was just 14.2 billion dollars, which is mm. quite an abysmal, you know, figure for well, us. Between you and I, would you decide to put your hard earned money in an unstable economy, in a in a place where you yourself will find it pretty difficult to go to because of security concerns? You probably will not do that. Now, th those are the things that actually drive the economy. You know, when you have the level of insecurity we have around here, between you and I, I cannot be bold enough now to take a vehicle and say I'm driving all the way to Abuja or to Kaduna. Even to drive, go through Beni or railroad now is a big deal. You know, so how do you expect someone to come into the economy, into a, into a population of about 100, 200 million right now? It's a, it's, a, it's a big market. So, but then, this 200 million is not residing only in Lagos, because Lagos seems to be the near perfect safe place when it comes to security. But Lagos is not Nigeria. Yes, it has a major stay in the economy of the country, but it's not Lagos market. Any foreigner who has this was part of these three hundred and seventeen trillion dollars mm -hmm. would want to come and just invest strictly in. He wants to move his product around the country. He wants to go to the places where the people will need his product. But his life is not safe. Lives of Nigerians are not safe. How much more a foreigner? So they are not. There is nothing impressive enough for them to want to bring their monies in here. And that is why you have this issue. So if the 14.2, um, the bulk of it, you realize just about 2.7 billion or there, 2.67 billion or thereabouts, is what goes into the, the FDIs. So the bulk of the money is out of the 14.2, is actually in the stock market. Mm -hmm. <laughs> where these just Apparently, it. we have more foreign portfolio investments coming into the country than foreign direct investment. But before we go, I would like us to watch a brief video of specific um, business owners here in Nigeria who, you know, are facing some challenges. Okay. It's not a complaint tax, so from uh, what we sell, then we make pay our tax from there. Yeah, we pay to the local governments. Well, uh, so far so good for Lagos State. Uh, I will rate them yes because uh, I've seen a lot of things that the past government have done. So I guess it's our tax. Uh, government should not adjust the policy because the economy these days is not quite encouraging. So government should not adjust the policy. All right, thank you very much. This, you're still watching Independence Day special on Plus TV Africa. All right, so basically we see that business owners keep complaining about the fact that the ease of doing business for them, you know, the economic situation is quite daunting. It is. Honestly, it is. Like I said earlier, you are like a local government. You are a government on your own. You provide every other thing that is going to be. You, you make, you tie the road, you actually fix the road to your factory. You fix the road to your office. You fix the road to your business premises. So you fix the road, you get your security, you do your water, you get your power. It, that's, that's calling for too much. And yet, you'll be assessed to taxation at the appropriate rate. Thank God for the tax credit scheme. You put up infrastructure and then you get a credit that government is starting of late. Yes, for those who have the might, they are working on it. It's good for them. It's good for, for, the, for, the, for the nation. We, we can now, as much as possible, bridge the gap in the infrastructure deficit. But minus that, what encouragement do we have as a nation? To get to register a company, how quickly can that happen? How, how receptive is government and government agencies regarding assisting business owners to get even co permits, construction permits? Those are the, you know, there are 10 parameters that go into determining the ease of doing business of nations. You know, fortunately, I mean, in the latest reports that we saw for 20, 2018, Nigeria has actually moved up to the 12th position under accessibility to credit. I said, oh, so there's something happening to our financial services industry. We are now 12th position, you know, in one of those uh, parameters for, credit. yes, in assessing credit. But yet, in some others, you will go as high as 170, 175 over 119 nations. You know, it's not speaking well. At 146, even in Africa, even in Africa, how many Africans want to come here and do business, even if because of the population? The population is the only excitement right now, and which ordinarily is supposed to be really for us the best opportunity we can cash in at the moment. Numbers, the numbers, the population is supposed to help us a great deal to ensure that this economy can actually make a U-turn, if only we can better it. If we encourage, I mean, the telecoms company, 
The telecoms is another service provider. We've seen the amount of foreign investment that have trickled into the country mm -hmm. by the major GSM companies in the country of today. This has gone into the economy to make something work. We have a lot of people employed by these organizations. And yet we have other service providers, even to these, to these companies that are doing well. Mm -hmm. you know, so those are the kind of things that can help a change and make the economy become active and vibrant. Government should, as a matter of, I think, well, maybe they're getting right there now, with the Economic Advisory Council, one would assume that with the current level of business people, not just the government officials that we used to have in the old times, these are typical business people. These are people who are, I mean, how they are criticizing the prior to now about some policies of government. They now have the opportunity to, work, to, to, to make it good, to advise the president directly. Mm -hmm. And of course, any of the other revenue agencies of government or agencies of government that has anything to do with the economy, to try as much as possible to develop programs, develop strategies, ensure that policies that should ordinarily, I would advise that whatever policy that is set up, just like the president said, let it have legal backing. That's the only way that we can sustain when an administration leaves, mm -hmm. another one will not throw it overboard. By deliberately bringing in the humanitarian ministry, the Ministry of Humanitarian Services, mm -hmm. like the president mentioned earlier today, tells us that, okay, from now on, a ministry has been, a ministry has been bathed with staff and necessary support of government. Whatever the cash condition, the, the conditional cash and uh, all of the uh, social intervention activities and programs of government cannot be thrown overboard if right. this administration leaves. Unfortunately, that's all we can have for now, but I know that Nigeria will definitely get it right at no, some we, point, we will. sometime. We will. We God is going to help us somehow. But we thank you so much for joining me in the studio. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Oh, you're still watching Independence Day special on Plus TV Africa. I am Irene Ubani. Now, I'll take a quick break. We'll be back soon.